Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at positive externalities of production, the diagram and possible government solutions. This is another form of market failure. So positive externalities of production, before we get into the graph, occur when the production of a good or service creates external benefits, right? These are positive external results of production. So <clears throat> positive externalities of production occur when the production of a good or service creates external benefits that are good to the third party. So these are things that are, when there's a production of this, it helps other people. And let us suppose, and here's a nice example. Well, I'll get into the example in a second. But before that, let's take a look at this, at this graph. Look, at this is the original more or less rule of 11 graph, right? This is where all externality graphs start. You have price. Right, you got the currency, you got P1. I still, you should have a zero down here, right? Per year over here. Okay, um, so you got your price, currency, P1, zero, Q1, quantity, units per year, and then marginal social benefit curve. This is the old demand curve renamed, and the marginal social cost curve is the old supply curve renamed. And in this particular case, they're actually, and I've I, I, it's a really helpful thing to think about. Think about the marginal social cost and marginal private cost being two lines on top of each other here. Likewise, the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit, there's actually two lines here. And as we get into um, uh, when, this, when, the, when, when the consumption, there's, there's a negative externality of consumption, you're going to have to move one of these curves. But for, for positive externalities of production, there are two lines here, Okay. So positive externality of production. So the production of something is going to create positive externalities for society that are the cost is going to be lower to society than the private firm. And so what does that mean? Well, the marginal social cost, that is what happens outside of the private production of a, of a good, is going to be lower. And that means that this marginal social cost curve should actually come down, Right? And the marginal private cost, which is the original supply curve, is going to stay put. All right, so let's take a look at what that might look like, and we'll walk through an example. All right, here we are, right? So the positive externality of production, here is the marginal private cost curve, which is the original supply curve. They're going to, there's going to be the production of something that is going to help. It's going to benefit society, which means there's going to be a lower, the marginal social cost is going to be lower than the marginal private cost. Check it out. This extended all the way down here, right? This is where I love to tell students to check out the cost. Marginal private costs are here, but because of the production of this, it actually helps society. The cost is lower, okay? So this gap right here is our positive externality. And then here we have something called the potential welfare gain, and that's a little bit different than the welfare law, obviously different than the welfare loss, which was created with the negative externality of production. This, the area of this triangle is the possible gain to society as the result of the promotion of this, the, the continuation of the production of a particular uh, good or service. Okay, so let's get an example and it'll really help you uh, understand it. Okay, so here you go. Imagine there is a large printing firm that provides high quality training for its employees. This is a cost to the firm. When employees leave the printing firm and go to other firms, however, there's a benefit to the other firms who do not have to spend money on training their new workers. That's kind of cool, right? This is a positive externality of production to the new firms. Society has gained, right, to the new firm, because these people are more highly trained, the new firm's going to benefit from the education of those workers. So society has gained from the training given by the printing firm, even though the firm has, the firm itself has not because those employees left. Thus, the marginal private cost of the firm is greater than the marginal social cost. And that creates this potential welfare gain. So what does it mean? It's like, hey, the government's like, gosh, we should continue to educate our people because there's all of these external benefits of a more highly educated society. Okay, so as we can see, right, this the, the firm is going to continue to produce at P1Q1, the cost of the educating of their 
their employees is embedded in here. But what the government would want is to continue to entice firms, companies, or maybe do it themselves, to educate its employees. And that way we would get out to this place out here, P2Q2, or point A. Point A is the point of allocative efficiency or the, the highest, um, uh, a better way of saying that is that this is the, the point of social efficiency. This is the goal of the government. They want to try to get and entice the, the uh, private firms or to do it themselves to, to produce at this socially allocative uh, point. Okay? I stumbled on my words there, but it'll make sense in a second. Okay, so what does the government do to help do this? What are the government solutions? Let's take a look. Okay, in the free market, right, so possible government solutions to positive externalities of production. In a free market, it's up to the government to rectify, just like, remember, the government or the parents of societies, to promote this. And what could they do? Well, they could subsidize firms that offer training, like that printing company, or they could provide vocational training, that is job training um, itself. The government could have these little uh, workshops. And in the, in the community where I live, outside of Santiago, Chile, or in Santiago, Chile, the, the municipality creates, has these vocational training services. They're free. My, one of my friends um, just took a six-week course on how to run a private business. It was free to him. But who paid for it? Well, of course, the government paid for it, right? The municipality paid for it. So let's take a look at those solutions and then evaluate them a little bit. So one solution would be for the government to subsidize the firm offering the training. The government could subsidize it. And if this were to happen, the marginal private cost curve would be shifted downward, right? Just like the old subsidy graph um, by the subsidy. And if a full subsidy were given, the MPC, the marginal private cost curve, could be the same as the marginal social cost. And the socially efficient point A, that's what I was trying to say before when I was fumbling on my words, would be reached. So if they could push that MPC down enough to get to the marginal social cost curve, they could be work at the, at the socially efficient point. Okay? That's possible, right? Or even closer, any way it would be closer to point A would be helpful. However, there are some problems, and here's your evaluation with the solution. One, how do you calculate the level of the subsidy deserved by each firm? I mean, that's a really practical thing. I mean, if you really want to cover up and, and, and gain all of that green triangle that I drew, drew in there, how are you going to do that? And how do you know if you are doing it? That's kind of hard. And the second thing, of course, the government's got to pay for the subsidy or pay for the programs for, the, for training its people. So the cost of the subsidy would pull government resources from other programs that may be more worthy, right? That makes sense. So there's, a, there's an opportunity cost here. Should they really be providing training for people to maybe potentially open a small business? Or should the government invest that money elsewhere, maybe in national defense or something? Okay, so there's always a trade-off with subsidies. The second solution to this problem could be that the government provide vocational training itself, which is to say the government sets up training centers for workers in certain industries. Not a bad idea, right? That would make, that would, that would increase or that would, uh, would, uh, it would move the marginal private cost curve down and take advantage of all of that potential welfare gain. But there are some problems with this solution too. So here's the evaluation portion. Although this is a possibility, the cost could be high. The trainers may lack experience found in the firms and it may dissuade firms from offering training on their own. Right? So if you could, if you could, um, if the government's going to provide these things, then firms would be like, oh, forget it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay for it. Right? And then maybe the, they wouldn't be as good. The, tire, the, the workshops wouldn't be as good. The other thing is that regardless of the cost or who pays for it, economies benefit enormously through training and retraining of labor. right? So uh, vocational training might not be the, the best way to do it. It could be investing in other sorts of ed- education. Um, the improvement in the quality of the labor of factor production can shift out the economies. Um, uh, production possibilities curve. So these aren't really problems, right? These are, that, maybe it's sort of misnamed here now that I relook at my, my slide. These are things that vocational training could help. Pushing out the production possibilities curve, that means that the government, the, the, you're increasing the potential of a society. A more highly educated society has more potential. 
And it and, and if you look at around the world, the more developed countries in the world also have the highest levels of education. They just kind of go hand in hand because the more educated you are, the more versatile you are, the more able you are to do different types of work. And that obviously helps the society as a whole. Okay, so I hope you found this video to be helpful. Um, positive externalities of production are a pretty interesting thing to look at. And mastery of that graph is important. And as I just keep going back and back and reminding you, once you have the discourse in your mind, once you have these ideas in your mind, memorize that graph because all of the stories that you need to tell for analysis and evaluation are represented in every graph that you do in economics. So go after the discourse, get the ideas, and then, then focus on the graph because if you know the stories on the graph and you have the language to do it, you're going to rock out the IB exam. All right, I hope this was helpful to you, and we'll talk to you in a bit.